and welcome to Text Talks. How are you doing today? I hope you're having an awesome day. Today, I wanted to talk about the concept of what you see is your reality and what's going on, your ability to observe. I'm going to bring in several ideas with this. Also, it's uh, about how to observe from a neutral standpoint, how to realize that it's difficult to be neutral and watch yourself while you're doing things that aren't neutral. Okay, so let's put this together. Um, to me, the idea that most of the things that you see in life, is, it's like a giant magic show. Again, the illusion, everything that's going on. You're looking over here and over in this spot where the real stuff is going on. And that's how the magician, the illusionist does their tricks. This also happens, though, in your day-to-day -day life. We get very focused on things that we feel are important. And a lot of times the idea of importance and its order or the right and wrong have a lot to do with like and dislike on our part. In other words, we make the jump and think that because we don't like something, that's bad. We like it. It's good. Now, you know that's not true because sometimes there are things you like that are not good for you. And there are things that you don't like that are good for you. And so that version, that rating scale we have can very much mess up what you feel is right or wrong. And you end up doing judging in a way that definitely will, will hurt you. It's okay to notice and observe your feelings about things. It's okay to notice that you like or dislike something. In fact, I encourage, I have said before that when I've had interns, I, I tell them, you know, you're going to have counter transference. Now, in case you haven't come across that concept before, it's, you know, the uh, an old psychoanalytic term, it's Freudian. It's the idea that how a client feels about you, they transfer their feelings, either their love or their hate or their disgust or, you know, their whatever those emotions and feelings are about other people and things. They transfer them to you as the therapist, and you have to be aware of that when you're working with people. You also have to be aware, though, that you will have counter transference, which means that you will have feelings that go out. Those feelings that you have may be just because of the way that person looks or talks or acts, or it may be in response to how they're treating you. If they feel that you're, you know, like if somebody looks at me and feels I'm their, their dad and they, they don't like their dad and they transfer and then I get that feeling of don't like and they're, they're giving me a hard time, I may start to act like that person. In other words, I fit right into that role. You want to be able to notice this coming on. And it's not necessary that you shut down and not have the feeling. What's important is that you notice the feeling, ah, for what it is, and that you're able to then sit back at that time or at a later point in time and think to yourself, now, why am I having that? Why are they having that? What's going on? What is the reality? The same way when you see something and you like or don't, don't like something. A lot of times if people are doing something and we, we term it, we judge it as good because they're doing what we wanted them to do. And that may be very destructive. There's an old Socratic dialogue where the idea is if you're the an emperor or a ruler and you tell your people to do something and in so doing it, they actually are working against your wishes and harming you should they do it or not do it. And, and I know that gets a complicated situation going there where, you know, doing what I'm told, but it's actually hurting. And so judging good and bad, you see how it starts to get very, very muddy, messed up, muddled up. I want you to be able to pull apart from that when you're making your observations about things because somebody may be doing something and you're getting angry at them because you're judging it as either bad or wrong. And then you're also putting more judgment into it. They're doing it specifically to get at me or make me mad. So you see that, you observe that, then you feel that, and then you react to them accordingly and you get very frustrated. And the thing is, you're not able to accomplish your goals if you're wrapped up in this illusion. And this is how you pull back because these, these are the things that cause suffering. Ancient wisdom or philosophies, they talk about the idea that your suffering or that your problems are coming 
from your misconception, misbeliefs about the world and what's going on, and you put your emotions into it, then you become attached to your own feelings. You want to feel good so bad that you now suffer and get frustrated because you're not getting what you want. So again, this is that idea of being able to observe and pull back from the judgment. I'm not saying you won't ever have it. You're going to have reactions, but notice your reactions, but don't think your reactions are the only reality. In fact, many times, many things you're seeing aren't reality per se. It's your emotions, your reactions to it. The water is so many degrees temperature and you in your mind judge that as being too hot or too cold and you don't like it and notice how you're going down that track when the fact is the water is this temperature. Good or bad depends on what you're doing with it. Are you cooking with it? Are you bathing with it? Are you watering the plants with it? What's going on here? Why do you need that? What are the outside circumstances? It may be hotter than all get go outside and you like that cold water that you jumped into. Or on the flip side, it may be freezing out there and you're taking one of them funny little hot baths out in the mountains in the little hot tub thing and the hot water is great. Again, circumstances, situation, your feelings, your thoughts about it, all these things go into it. I want you to be able to pull back. Let your observations just be that first. And now I'm not telling you to neglect safety. If there's a bus careening down the sidewalk, looks like it's going to hit you, jump out the way. The thing is, is making all those extra judgments. The driver did that on purpose. He's being mean. He's a horrible driver. He? Do you know it's a he? Are they really being horrible? Maybe it's not their fault at all. Maybe the bus, literally, the controls have went wonky. Not their problem, not their fault. They're just caught in the situation. Now they're stuck fixing whatever the problem is, trying to get the thing back on the road. All those judgments, though, do not help you from simply getting out of the way of the bus. That's what you need to do. Then later you can go back and observe things. It's the same way with most of the stuff in your life. When you find yourself getting upset, be curious. Step back. Look at the situation. What's the details of, of you being upset? Is that personal from experience? Problems, likes, dislikes, the person. Sometimes the same thing done the same way by two different people, you will like one and not the other because you attach your liking for the person to the action going on. Can you see how that makes things very difficult for you to actually then get your life on track and do the things you want to do because you're putting so much emotion and attachment into your observations? So do what you can to pull back, think about it, reflect on it. It's a slow process. It's a learning process, but you can do it. You just have to keep at it. Okay. Hope you have a great day and I'll talk to you later.